We've all had the experience where we go to pick up a full milk carton from the table, only to realize it's actually empty. Now, when we go to discard the empty milk carton, our brain has already compensated for this new weight of the carton and can throw it away easily. Now imagine instead of your brain misestimating the weight of a milk carton, your brain misestimated the weight of your arm. And instead of correcting for this new weight after a poorly executed movement, your brain kept getting it wrong forever. This is an example of what we think is happening in patients living with cerebellar damage. The cerebellum is this part in the back of your brain that helps with motion planning, coordination, and motion learning, among other functions. And when it's damaged from either a stroke, a tumor, or a genetic condition, it can cause your brain to think that your arm is essentially either heavier or lighter than it actually is, causing you to either over or undershoot every single movement you make. It can result in the kind of zigzag trajectories you see here. For patients with this disorder, bringing a cup of coffee to their mouth can be both a challenging and almost hazardous activity. Unfortunately, there's no cure for cerebellar damage and there aren't any devices on the market to help. Therapy can help patients with cerebellar damage learn strategies to work around their motion deficits for their activities of daily living, but it just can't get to the root of the problem. We just can't teach your cerebellum to learn again. In my research, I'm utilizing this ability of inability of the cerebellum to learn in order to trick the brain into sending the correct commands to the arms. Now, how are we going to do this? We're going to tell the brain that the arm is in a carefully selected shifted location. So that based on the perceived location of the arm in dark blue and the real location of the trash can in black, the user will e easily be able to move the real carton to the trash can. So how are we going to trick the brain into thinking the arm is in this shifted location? We have two ways to do this, a visual way and a sensory way. Visually, we can simply cover the user's arm with a screen and show them their arm is in this shifted position. Using this technique, we've been able to improve the reaches of every cerebellar patient we've tested so far in the lab. Okay, you may say, that sounds great, but what does that look like in real life? We can't have people walking around with their arms covered. That's where the second trick comes in. Using vibration of a particular frequency applied to a muscle tendon, we can trick the brain into feeling like the arm is in the shifted position. We're hoping that eventually, a wearable device using vibration can be developed for patients with cerebellar damage to help them accomplish their tasks of daily living, like picking up a milk carton from a table. Thank you.